You know, I, I like to try to break things, think, things down in a very simple and very practical way. And, and I could just, I'll start off, just take a, where I left off on Wednesday and, and say this. You, the, per, the people who most engage in worship and praise at the beginning of the meeting are the people that are always going to get the greatest profit, receive the most from the Holy Ghost by the end of the meeting. And it's really all, once again, it just comes down to participation. And if you don't know how to, and, and, and it's, not so, it's not so much um, uh, as it were participating with what's going on around you. Of course, that's, that's certainly true. It's really just participating with God is just being so excited about worshiping Him and knowing Him and loving on Him. It's a state of, of, of being yielded to Him. And the more that we do that, the greater our capacity becomes to receive from Him. And we just find ourselves, we discover ourselves right in the big midst of the movings of God. Uh, someone, see, where was, where were we? Uh, yesterday, uh, we had, uh, I took my wife out shopping and uh, to, uh, it was my birthday. And I, I love to take my wife shopping to get her something for my birthday. That's what I like to do. And uh, at, at any rate, I, I went to pick her up some food to make her uh, dinner because that's one other thing I like to do, it, you know. And some folks think that's upside down. I think it's right side up. But at any rate, um, and I was, it, it was towards the end of the day. I was pretty exhausted and like, okay, driving home. And I get this call, and a person says, I got this growth on my neck. And as soon as they did, boom, I got hit with the gift of faith. And out of my mouth, I cursed the thing. And I commanded it to dry up. I'm telling you, a miracle happened right at that moment. The person on the other side of the phone got hit by the power of God. That's just living in a realm. I don't have to try to pray. It doesn't matter how, 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 you know, you know, how supposedly prayed up I am, how refreshed I am, how tired I am, whatever. It's another realm. It's the realm of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Praise God. And we just want everybody to be able to understand how to live that realm. If, you know, I walked in a, a, to one night and, and, and um, there was this dear lady and she discovered that she was going to have to minister something at the meeting that I was at, she was at. And she's in there just, just scrambling, you know. She's just scrambling. She's just scrambling. I said, look, you know, I said, you're not going to get it now. Uh, you're going to get more confused if you try to get a last-minute word. Believe me, the best thing you can do is relax and recognize that whether you like it or not, those people are going to get what you already got. Are you listening to me? Listen, I'm telling you, when I spoke to her telling her that, God spoke to me telling me that. In a radical way, so I was just like, wow, okay, I got it, Pops. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. And so, I, you know, once again, we give, our, we give ourselves to this realm of, of studying the Word and, and praise God for it. And we give ourselves to this wonderful realm of praise. And you know, it, Have you ever noticed how blessed Father gets when you're extremely tired or don't feel well and you begin to just praise Him? Huh? He gets blessed. I was feeling terrible the other day. I'm just, I, I'm, I haven't had been hit with anything like that for years and years and years. And I'm going, you know, I could have gone, oh, why, what's wrong? I don't know. But I would just basically, in, you know, I had that night when I got this hit with this thing, I'm just, I was praying, you got to get off my body in the name of Jesus. And of course, usually when I do that, I'll wake up in the morning and I have, there won't be any sign or symptom of it. But at any rate, what happened was, you know, I, I, I'm finding myself just kind of physically feeling so run down and just, just worn out and just kind of talking to the Lord mentally, you know, a little bit of whispers. Oh, God, oh, God, in the name of Jesus, he's got to get off me. Has no right to be on my body. And then what I did was it just got to that point where I was just overwhelmed with thanksgiving for the Lord. I just began to praise him. I, I just, you know, I just, Stopped everything, you know, just got myself turned around and I just began to worship him. I began to sing praises to his name. I sing praises to your name. 
Oh, Lord, praises to your name. And you know what happens? Father loves that. Everything you need begins to get downloaded to you. It's not religion. It's relationship. I don't have to do it. It's not because uh, something's being required of me. It don't even matter what's going on with me. I love them no matter where I'm at. No matter what situation I'm in. I'm just captivated by them. God the Father <laughs> is working as earnestly as he possibly can get us out of religion into relationship. And at the heart of that is this love thing, man. And that's why on air, almost every page of the Bible, you're going to find the Lord talking to us about unfeigned love, you know, pure love. Seeing as you've, you know, purified your soul in obedience of the truths under this unfeigned, uncontaminated, pure love. See that you love one another with a pure heart fervently because the Lord's always saying, I want you to do it for everybody else in doing it for me. More than to giving it to me, give it to everybody else, and then I'm going to be happy with it, right? He's like, Un, see that you purified your souls in obeying the truth, un unfeigned love. See that you love me with a pure heart fervently. See that you love the brethren with a pure heart fervently. That's beautiful, isn't it? And that's like what the Lord likes to do, you know. For, that's the way he gets blessed, giving to us, doing something for the people that he loves. And then us, to the people that he loves, doing something for each other out of that the gifts of the spirit become effective powerful that's why paul said if you speak with the tongues of men and angels it it, it, it what shall you know what is what's it going to profit you if you have not love you become it becomes irrelevant where it could have been a glorious expression thunderous sound from heaven all this it is just it's a gift it's the work, it's something that God has for us, but it's nothing but a tinkling cymbal and the sound of brass. You have all faith so that you can move mountains and you have not love. Once again, what does it profit you? Who's going to profit? It's not going to profit anyone because what's going to fuel the giftings of the Spirit, what's going to make them effective, what's going to make them result in your life being changed, growing, maturing, people's lives around you being changed, is the power of the divine glorious love and compassion of god that fuels it that makes it a living reality that embodies it that gives it shinu that gives it flesh that gives it breath and life otherwise it can be likened into a valley of dead bones dry bones and the lord's going to challenge us on this relationship of love he's going to challenge us on every level and hey you know what I've been so blessed because, you know, it's easy to love those who serve you and lay their life down for you. And boy, the Lord just blessed me. And I, I, I guess he just really saw that he needed to nurture me in this and in a special kind of way. So he gave me the woman he gave me, my wife, Ann. Because that's who she is. I mean, she called me Mark the perfect man when I was far from any similitude of that. She prophesied me into existence. Hallelujah. She prophesied everything in my life, just loving me, empowering me, holding me up. I mean, you know, there, we've got we to be willing to do that for one another. Somebody says, somebody might be watching me right now on the web and say, wow, I wish my wife would do that. And they may turn to their wife and say, wow, why can't you do that? <laughs> no, maybe reality of it is that obviously in your situation, the Lord wanted you to do that for her. Because obviously you're the more mature person in the situation. It just so happened to be my wife is more mature than I am. And so I got, I got to benefit from her spiritual maturity. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, <laughs> are you listening to me? This is practical reality. I'm, I'm going to talk to you tonight about word of knowledge. I'm going to tell you, it comes spontaneously without expectation. They get the faith. Boom, it's just there. No matter how you feel, you're in a realm of walking with God and doing what God wants you to do. All of a sudden, a need is put upon you. There it is. Get the faith is there. It pours out of you. It works. It results in signs, wonders, and miracles. It results in the kingdom of God being advanced. It results in souls being saved. It results in people being establ established in the kingdom. The hardest thing that we have to do is to bring people to the reality of where they are at because most people think they're far beyond where they're at. Just the way it is. Immaturity is a terrible thing. It is. 
it does not have the ability to perceive or understand those things which maturity gives you naturally. Huh? It's a difficult thing when you're 50 years apart from someone and you're trying to give them some basic insight so that they can understand what was the proper way to behave themselves and they're feeling like you're being unjust and picking on them. That's terrible. Hey? Well, you know, here is God and His love. He's not, He's speaking to us things and if we will just do them, we don't understand them. We don't have the uh, maturity nor the insight or the ability to perceive why we do it. We just do it because we're going to be obedient. And out of that, we live like out of that. We don't know why we're doing it. We don't have the inst instinct to do it. We don't have the perception to do it. We do it out of obedience, and we're living like we're a million years old. We're living as though we have the maturity of being a trillion years old. Because we're simply obeying the insights of God. And that response then is the response that we would have at that level of maturity. And, and these, the hardest thing to get folks to do is to recognize to be sober. If you want to understand spiritual giftings, it's one of the most important dynamics presented to us by, Romans, by Paul in Romans chapter 12. Be sober. Don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to. Look at the gifting in your life. Stop. How many souls have been reached through your life? Come on. How much has the kingdom of God been advanced through your life? How much is the richness of the gifting? Because I'm going to tell you right now, the gift makes room for the person. Be sober. Look at where you're at. Recognize Father wants to take you on, but he can't while you're living in denial. You need to get let out of denial. Amen into the promised land and and he's come to do that holy spirit's come to de deliver us from the land of bondage and in the, and and get us out of living in the delta of of the nile and so all we gotta do is be willing to follow it, it is somebody said why do you love the gifts of the spirit i love the gifts of the spirit because god loves the gifts of the spirit I, uh, why do you love miracles i love miracles because jesus does miracles I love the gift of the Spirit because that's what the Holy Spirit does to glorify Jesus. Every gifting of the Spirit is about glorifying Jesus. <laughs> it's about revealing Him. It's about making Him known. This is why the Holy Spirit has come, to glorify Jesus, to reveal Jesus, to make Jesus known. So, that, so then the manifestation of the Holy Spirit is given to every man for that sole purpose of revealing Jesus, of making Jesus known. Now, th there's a basic principle there in then then I'm going to have to be willing to participate with, this isn't about me. This is about the gospel of the kingdom. This is about what Father wants to do. This is about the will of God. And I want these things more than anything else. I'm going to have to have some practical applications then in basic obedience, the basic love of God and the compassion of God in order for this to work right because this isn't going to work in strife and vainglory. Huh? Laying aside all hypocrisy. Huh? And all strife and vainglory and evil speaking, all that stuff, right? All that nonsense. Lay it aside so that you can desire the sincere work, milk of the word so you can mature. And what, God, what is God going to do? How, what, is spiritual, what is spiritual maturity? Spiritual maturity is where we are growing up into all things into Christ Jesus. So we're growing into every dimension of who he is, what, he, what he's doing, how he feels, Jesus is the cure. He's the remedy for every person's problem. Well, what if, if, what if we babysit problems in our lives? What if we hold on to issues in our own life? We, can, we need ministering to. We're not, we're not going to be much, we're not going to be very effective at ministering and flowing in the gift of the anointing of the Holy Spirit to set somebody else free because we ourselves are in bondage and we can't receive what we need to supply to them and we're going to receive it from the Holy Ghost. And somebody said, what do you mean? Well, if I could receive what I needed from the Holy Ghost to supply to someone else, then it would impact me. And so that's why Paul says to his son Timothy, he says, Timothy, wait a minute, man. Hold up. Recognize. You must first be partaker of the fruit. You know? Don't you get off, you know, concerned about this issue or that issue. Understand, these things got to happen in your life first. And, and then 
you know, and, the, and there's another great dimension to that, of course, as Paul's expressing this. He says, stir up the gift of God that is in you that was put given to you by the, by the word of prophecy and by the laying on of my hands. So we know the gifts of the Spirit are imparted by the laying on the hands. We know the gifts of the Spirit um, are, are established in our life um, by prophecy. And, and, and we also can understand that in, a big, in the bigger context of the reality that we've been born again. And, and the, the gift of salvation has as, uh, has as uh, for us a complete package of everything that God has purposed for us to do. But then there's that other place of being endued with power from on high by the Holy Ghost to be witnesses unto him, to have an unlimited supply of that which the Holy Spirit is giving to glorify Jesus, functioning and operating through us so that we can literally be the representatives of Christ Jesus to be the representatives of heaven, speaking out of heaven. All gifts of the Spirit are expressions that are right out of heaven. And everybody should want to enjoy the bliss of living in heaven in his presence, fullness of joy at his right hand, pleasures forevermore. Well, then you're going to have to participate with that. Um, you know, when you think about the direction, the leading, the guidance of the Holy Spirit, hearing God, it's really more than anything else uh, about participating with his movings, participating with his inspirations, participating with what it is he's doing. I'm never going to really begin to move in the Holy Ghost if I'm over in a realm of hate and screaming and hollering. I'm not going to be feeling the Holy Ghost very much. Are you with me? If at all. I'm not going to really hear his inspirations there. I'm going to have to repent. And, you know, and I can say the same way. Guilt, condemnation, intimidation. I'm not going to hook up with the Holy Spirit there. I'm not going to hear his voice. And so I want to begin to practice in my life things that belong to the Holy Ghost. That's what is spiritual. He that minds spiritual things. If you're spiritual, you're going to mind spiritual things. You know, uh, if you mind carnal things and natural things, it's, those are temporal things, right? And what are you gonna, what's going to happen in the midst of that which is temporal? It's, what, what, what is going to happen? What, is, what does the scripture say about those things which are temporal? He says, it's just death. Huh? Right? But if you mind spiritual things, the unseen things, that spiritual dimension, what is that? That's life and peace. Ah, I can navigate here, right? Because that's a pretty big contrast. That's like turning all the lights off. It's dark. We're in the wrong spot. Okay? All the lights on. Hey, we're in the right spot. This we can navigate. We're good enough on that one, right? If you're dead, if it's death and destruction, hey, you know, I'm in the wrong spot over here. And somebody said, well, I don't really know how is death and destruction or not. Well, is it life and peace? And so they said, I'm not sure. Well, let me tell you, if it's life and peace, it's God's kind of life. It's abundant. It's feel, it feels good. It's, it's, you, you're, you're happy about things. You're more than happy about things. And, and when you begin to participate just in real basic things like this in God, when you're willing to keep yourself in the love of God, you're setting yourself up to flow in all nine gifts of the Spirit. And there's more than nine. And it's more important then functioning in the gifts of the Spirit is knowing how to access the gifts of the Spirit, is knowing what atmosphere to be in, what place to be in. I'm not going to mentally figure out how to give a word of knowledge. I never have. Word of knowledge just comes to me that, like, any other, like any other glorious event, like any other moving of God. It's like, you know, I, I left a counseling session. I've been in for about an hour and 45 minutes, of course, in counseling. First thing I do with the Lord Counseling to me is just as much as depending upon the word of knowledge as anything else. I just simply say to the Lord, Lord, they're coming to inquire of you, not of me. Speak through me. That's it. Okay? And then I just wait. I don't have anything to say, nothing planned. I wait for the quickening. I wait for the unction. See, we have an unction from the Holy One. Huh? It's, an, it's, a, it's a divine mo moving power, motivating power. It expresses. It's not out of our own ideas, not out of our own concepts. It comes right out of the realms of the Holy Ghost. So it's really, it's just all the dynamics of a relationship. I'm in the right attitude. I'm in the right atmosphere. I, I'm giving my place, I'm giving myself to the Holy Spirit. I'm recognizing Him. I've got a real true dynamics of a relationship going on with Him. Then there's, you know, 
within the framework of this. Um, you know, yesterday somebody was just talking to me. What are they doing? They ask me, they say, I've got a problem. I've got a cancer on my neck. What are they doing? They're talking to God and they're accessing the anointing through of my life. Why did they call me? Why did they tell me? Because they believe that they can access the anointing to get healed. Now, somebody calls me up and they don't believe that they can access the anointing to be healed. Ain't nothing going to happen. I probably won't be quickened. I've been there before. Oh, would you pray? And it's like I'm thinking, I don't want to pray. You know why? Because I, I, I can interpret that like interpreting tongues. I know, I'm dealing with doubt and unbelief on the other side. So then I just start talking to them. I'll walk up through it. So uh, what's going on? You know, just because I'm not going to do no religious prayer. Oh, will you pray over the meal? No. Why? Because of the way you asked. Because you just expect me to go, God is good. God is great. You know, thank you for this food. Bless it to our body. I'm not going to do that. I'm gonna, I want it to be real. I want everybody here to be truly thankful kind of thing. That's just the way that I move in God. I believe that I'm not going, if any dimension, if I feel any insult against truth and sincerity, I'm going to lay aside hypocrisy. I'm going to lay aside insincerity. I'm not going to deal with it. And then I'll, and I'll express myself. Fortunately, I don't have to do that very much, but I have had to do it. I've had somebody say, oh, Reverend, will you pray? No. Why not? Because you're not really interested in addressing God. It's just a religious activity for you, and I'm not going to participate. How oh, the guy's angry. He's weird. No. You repent, I'll pray. You repent for your attitude, and then I'm going to pray. Hard. Sowing where you've not reaped. Gathering where you've not laid up. And, you know, but it's just really, or, or most important thing here, it's not any kind of defaults that we're doing. We're just very sensitive to the Lord. And he gave, he circumcised our heart. He gave us a new heart and he gave us a new spirit so that we could be one with the Holy Ghost. So we could be sensitive to him. This isn't hard to do. We do this by nature. We naturally do this. We're naturally in the realms of the Holy Ghost. We're naturally hear, hearing the Holy Spirit. Now, here we are, we're babes, we're growing, we're maturing, we're just babes, and let's just go all the way to the moment of time of birth. New birth is one of the most exciting times. Everybody's really excited. At that moment, you're empowered to walk on the water and everything else, and you're ready to get here all done. And those prayers can be very effective, and that kind of testimony can be very effective. Okay, now you've aged two years, okay? And with it, you have your collection of disappointments, and you have your collection of doubts, and you have your various different bad interactions with other saints who's trying to help you understand that you've got more zeal than knowledge, okay? And so now you're completely, the wind is out of yourself. Shouldn't be, but it's the way it happens. Wind's out of yourselves. And really all Father's wanting to teach you is how to walk in humility. All he's wanting to do is teach you how to trust him more. Really, the wind should have never been taken out of your sails. Huh? You, should have, you should have just said, hey, look, I appreciate that. All the counsel that came to you, all the circumstances and disappointments that came to you. You should have just every time had somebody around you, hopefully nurturing and saying, just exalt the word of God. Forget about your circumstance. God can't lie. He's going to perfect everything that concerns you. Go ahead and shout louder. Go ahead and prophesy more. But unfortunately, a lot of time what happens is just the opposite takes place okay um, and so maybe maybe tonight you find yourself somewhere in that but maybe a little bit more than two years old well, what are you going to do was, at some juncture you're going to just humble yourself begin to exalt the word of God get liberated get really released within this love relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ to where that you now free to move free to function because if I look at the big picture of the gifts of the spirit there, there are two things that ought to be happening in the framework of our thinking with respect to the gifts of the Spirit. One is the actual activity of and function of the church. Now, that is a novel thought, that the gifts of the Spirit are actually for the activity and function of the church. And it's not about a music ministry. Hey, God placed in the church some music ministry. Some, you know, 
this and some that. I mean, if we went through all the list of what everybody has emphasized is supposed to be on a church program, you're not going to, most of it you're not going to find in the Bible. But what God placed in the church is first apostles, secondary prophets, after that teachers. Then what is immediately after following, after these giftings that God has placed within the church to perfect you? And that's what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm not, you're not supposed to be having so much bad experience. You're going to have bad experience if you give yourself over to rebellion and defiance. A lot of people do it. You pick it on me. We're not picking on you. We're trying to get you out of the ditch. Here, take the rope. It's much better up here, okay? We're trying to get you to move on. We're, to, you know, come on. You know, zeal, zeal is good. But come on, knowledge with zeal is even better. So I said, where do you want? Zeal or knowledge? I go with zeal every time. Okay, we'll work with zeal. Okay, so long as zeal will humble itself a little bit and be taught. I'm going to go with zeal. I don't want to sit around with a bunch of big head people. It's weird looking anyways. You hang out with a bunch of people full of knowledge. I don't want to be that. Because that's not going to be the church. He places right in there with, right in there with this authority gifting, this apostolic gifting, with this prophetic gifting, with this teaching gifting. The next thing you see is miracles. That's what Father once said. It's right there in the midst of the church. Gifts of healing. Miracles. Gifts of healing. He, when we look at the church in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the Lord highlights it in verse 7 through 11. He says, the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every person. Well, I'm going to have it. I'm going to have it then. I'm going to have these things. Well, I, 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 I'm going to come in expectation and confidence that these things are going to happen in my life because if I don't have expectation, if I don't have confidence, if I don't have boldness, I'm going to sit around. Oh. Interpretation of tongues is so easy. It's so easy. When somebody's speaking in an unknown tongue, this to be, to be interpreted, you hear exactly, it's just going off in your head what's, what they're saying. It's just going off. You're not trying nothing. It's just going off. I, I, I think I've, I've done more songs through interpretation. I've, God used me to write more songs through the interpretation of tongues than any other way. Because somebody's just, someone's just there on the platform, or, you know, usually that's the context, and they're singing in the Spirit, and I hear the words. And it's the same way if someone's, I hear, I hear the words. As though I have a translation device on. And it's, and it's not audible, it's in my head. It's in my spirit. We would say it's in our head, but it's in our spirit. It's things that we're hearing. And it, it's just that easy, and you just got to be that comfortable with it. But where do you get that comfortable with it? You get that comfortable with it just being, just being free to praise Him, free to worship Him, because it's the fountainhead of it all. It's the fountainhead of the, gift, the giftings of the Spirit. The fountainhead of the giftings of the Spirit is praise and thanksgiving. You just get to take praise and thanksgiving to another level. That's why Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, that you praise most excellently, or you give thanks most excellently. It's just that everybody else that doesn't understand, they're, they're not going to profit from it. But you're praising most excellently. Well, guess what you should do before you praise more excellently? Praise. Just start praising. It, it is a, it is a it, song and worship is a prophetic realm. Song and worship is something that goes on Throughout the ages, when there's no one to else, as it were, to minister to, worship's going on. Father puts it at the forefront. He says, this is why I'm giving you the Holy Ghost. This is why that I've sent Christ Jesus, my only begotten Son. This is why I've, I've called out to men and I've had long suffering and gentleness and mercy with men because I desire somebody to worship me by the Holy Ghost. Well, that's where it's got to be beginning. And it's so liberating. Huh? Everybody's singing. You say whatever you want to say. Within the context of just loving on it. Jesus, you're wonderful. You're glorious. Out of that, it begins to become stronger. It becomes to more, at least from baby language, and it becomes more profound, and it will all go all the way to a statesman in God. Now what happens if you wake up Wednesday morning with it, Thursday morning with it? And Thursday you say, I'm going to give myself, because here's what, Jude said, said, build up yourself in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Well, I get that. One day, the Lord, I was asking the Lord about a miracle that didn't happen, that should have happened. And I said, Lord, why didn't it happen? He said, you need to pray more in the Holy Ghost. I, I get it, Father. Well, somebody said, we're chapter and verse, chapter and verse. 
Begin it, begin in, begin in John chapter 7, verse 37 through 39. Come to drink, out of your belly will flow inexhaustible expressions of divine power and glory called rivers of living water. This spake he of the Holy Ghost, which was not yet given, for he was not yet glorified. Okay? When he was exalted at the right hand of God, glorified, he poured forth that which you both see in here, Acts 2, 33. What did they see in here? When the Holy Ghost was poured out to give man power from on high, was coming out of their mouth. Hallelujah. Paul, then Jude says, build up your faith. Build up yourself in your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. To do what? To do what? Keep yourself in the love. Ah. Huh? You want to hear God? You want to be available? You screaming and hollering at your spouse, they ain't going to make you available for nothing but correction and chastisement. Praise God for chastening. Amen. Because he wants us to be able to receive all that he has. So that in order for us to receive all that he has, what is he going to do? Chasing it. But what if you muley? I've known a lot of muley Christians. They're just muley. They try to lead them, and all they do is set their feet. I have a cure for that, for, for muley horses. But I don't for human beings. The Lord hasn't shown me yet. I don't think it'll, we're allowed. I'm allowed to dominate a, a, the, a, the, the a will of horse. And we have ways to do it. Which primarily starts with bit and bridle and a few other tricks known only to people who need to know them. It's on a need to know basis, which we don't announce. And then we take care of the animals. We just make sure that they do what they're supposed to be doing. Men, they have their own free will. What, what happens when, when we're at this juncture that where we're not really willing in, at that juncture to allow Father to have free dominion and authority over our will? We're stuck on the holding pattern before God. You have to decide, well, how long am I willing to be? How, am I, how long am I willing to be stuck? You know, here Father makes wisdom and insight for us, not, it makes it available for us, not on the level of how mature we are, Okay, which means that if we were mature enough to understand what it is he's asked us to do, then we would do it because we get it. Oh, I get it. Most thing God asks you to do, you don't get nothing. You don't get it. I don't get it. You don't get it. If you get it, you just imagine you got it. <laughs> Believe me. <laughs> Are you listening to me? We do it out of obedience. He said, I want you to bless those. I want you to bless those who curse you. Why? Did it just seem like it's going to help them at all? They need to be, they need to be corrected. They're going to continue to, you know, bless those who persecute you. That's rewarding bad behavior. How does it like you, God? We'll justify whatever. He says, bless those who curse you so that you may inherit a blessing. Ooh. Well, I don't really understand that. Father, not to come down in every context and tell me exactly why and give me a word of knowledge and give me discernment. Huh? Because it's the same as when I just simply hear, bless those that curse you, I got the word of knowledge. I got the knowledge of God because that's what the word of knowledge is. It is the knowledge of God about the situation. Got the word of knowledge. I got the word of wisdom for myself of what's going to happen for me if I do it. The pr principle. Now, if I do it and I'm willing to give myself to that realm, now all I'm doing is I've now just given Father permission to speak to me on another level. When we, when, we, when we begin to recognize our need to participate with God in very practical, simple ways, then our coveting of spiritual gifts actually goes to another level. In other words, you could be saying, I really desire, I really desire to walk in spiritual gifts. And then you start doing it and you get a little disappointed because pastor corrected you because it was, you know, Baby talk. Look, and that's, that's good, but you know, it was mostly goo goo gaga. And now all we're all doing is goo goo gaga. Well, no, praise God for goo goo gaga, man. I mean, at least we know you're not mute. We're hearing you say, I'm coming out of your voice. But all you need to do is make these adjustments and it won't be goo goo gaga anymore. And, you know, if people respond to it correctly, 
because they're so desirous of spiritual gifts, they're immediately going to get promoted, but they're going, by the Holy Ghost, they're going to get promoted, but they're going to go through a transition and a challenge because now they're going to have to deal with the self-interest of the pride of life, and they're going to have to humble themselves, and they're going to have to deal with a sense of failure because they've always been told they're never good enough. I'm going to just get over it. You're not never good enough. Now you just accept it. Now go ahead and embrace the free gift of salvation and let God the Holy Ghost teach you how to do it properly. And then that way you don't have to feel all bummed down anymore about the whole program. Okay? I'm not going to, you're not going to, you're never going to do God good enough. Is that, is that hard for you to receive? You ain't never going to do God Holy Ghost perfect enough. Now praise God he put apostles, prophets, and evangelists, pastors, and teachers so that there can be adjustments made by the Holy Ghost so that there's, I, I love being around that maturity in the spirit the more that maturity is around the Spirit, the more those giftings are together in the, in the Holy Ghost, it, the, the more profound it is. It's just, and, and we can all grow from it. And you get to, you can say, well, look, we just don't have that many people around here all the time that are that mature in the giftings of the Spirit. Hey, well, look, you can be the answer to your own problem. Just stick around mature, and then we're going to have some mature people around in the things of the, of the Spirit. And so those things coming together really make for a profound difference. So, let me just say this. Now, well, I'm gonna come, I want to just backtrack just a, just a little bit. One of the most important reasons for the giftings of the Spirit to be in manifestation is because that's the activity and function of, function of the church. And if you, if, if you looked in, of course, as I was saying, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7, 11, 2, 7 through 11, it says, manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. And what's going to happen? To one's going to give the word of knowledge. To another's going to give the word of wisdom. To another's going to give discerning of spirits. And I like, I know it's not like group like this. I like to group them like this. The revelation giftings, power giftings. So revelation giftings, uh, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discerning of spirits. Power giftings, working of miracles, uh, gifts of healings, and um, gift of faith. Uh, so you guys were having a meeting the other night, I guess, evidently, and you prayed for Brittany. And Brittany's had had some kind of shoulder problems for a while. And you guys are there in a meeting together. You pray for her. She immediately gets healed. Praise God. So, okay, so you just like pray. The Lord's here. He's here. This is working. The church, in the midst of the church, this is working. Here we are. We're having a small group of people getting together. We're praying for one another. Well, that's exactly what should be happening. You experience the gifts of healing. This manifested in the midst of the church. You begin to put it into practice in your life. You begin to give yourself to the activity of the Holy Ghost on a day-to-day -day basis. Now what's happening? The more you yield to the Holy Ghost, uh, the stronger that flow becomes. The more you give place to the manifestation of the presence of the Lord, the stronger that manifest presence becomes in our life. Then we come back into the church next Sunday, measurable growth. Huh? Then day, week in, week out, there's this measurable growth because you're taking that which you've received. It's constant. It doesn't need to be stirred up. It's active. It hadn't run dormant. It didn't have some run up against some bad situation, some catastrophe, some, you know, you know, backslidden state or whatever. It's just continually being developed and growing in your life. And, and, the, and the beauty of that then is the, the maturity level that results in more radical healings and miracles and, and greater frequency of healing and miracles, and greater diversity of healing and miracles. There is a miracle that I have not witnessed with my eyes that should be happening. I have never witnessed with my eyes someone with an arm cut off and it grow out. Come on, man. That's the ministry of Jesus. But that's not where you start. Grab somebody's nub. In the name of Jesus. It's easier to get somebody healed of something you can't see inside their organs. You know? Because it, it just, because what you see with your eyes has a huge impact. <laughs> on the dynamics of your faith. You've got to grow and mature in this, in this dimension. What, what if, okay, let me finish with this, this spirit. 
And then the, then the vocal gifts, prophecy, tongues, interpretation, tongues. What if we set that now as the premise for the way that church takes place? In other words, you say, you never been to church. You didn't go to church unless you experienced the manifest presence of God. You met with God. Because that's what going to church is, right? Meeting with God. Say so you went to the building, but did you meet with God? You met with God and you went to church. Okay. Now, you didn't really go to church and, and, and you're not really a part of the church unless you functioned as a member in the body of Christ. Huh? And so if you function as a member in the body of Christ, then what's going to happen? You're going to do what? You're going to come under the inspirations of the Holy Ghost. To do what? To participate in what's going on in praise and in worship, and which is always a fundamental expression of what it means to be filled with the Spirit, right? Be filled with the Spirit. Speak to yourself in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, all on a supernatural basis. Psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, if you define them contextually, psalms is a prophetic singing. Hymn demarcates an event and a move of God. And spiritual songs, as by Paul's definition, is praying and singing in the Spirit. Singing in, in, in tongues, in other words. To do what? Be filled with the Spirit, speak to yourself. Psalms, hymns, spiritual song, singing, making melody in your heart unto God. Giving thanks always, giving thanks always unto God by Christ Jesus. That's, that dimension has to be a, a living reality in our life. When you begin to obey God on this level, and he says, don't, you know, don't appear before me with a sad countenance. When, you know, that, that, that's more important than bringing an offering of money. Bringing an offering of praise and thanksgiving and joy, joy is far more important and far more frequently visited in the issues of the Word of God than bringing a, a financial offering. However, a financial offering, finances may be part of your problem. That money may be part of your sad countenance. Okay? And you could get, you could get rid of that problem, get, move it out of the way by just giving it and get happy real quick. And I've watched that happen over and again because the Lord would take and tune our heart through our giving. He will. He'll teach us how to receive through our, he'll teach us how to receive, hallelujah, through our giving. Praise God. So I say, wait a minute. The Lord expects me. I've got a responsibility on my shoulders. I have this responsibility to be ready to function as a member in the body of Christ. So how am I going to function as a member in the body of Christ? I have to be taken by the Holy Spirit and baptized down into one body. So I said, well, that happened at salvation. No, not necessarily. Yes, it happened at salvation, but you can't lock it in there. In fact, by context, it's talking about how the body of Christ functions. It's not talking about what happened to you at salvation. Are you with me? You see, you understand the context? Context is really important. Huh? No context, you got pretext, now you don't have a text at all. So you want, you know, you want context. So here it is, Holy Ghost. So I say to the Holy Spirit, I say, Lord, I want to be prepared. And we give ourselves to preparation. Now, I'm, I'm, I'll tell you, I've had one of those days. I've had one of those days that just whoosh, rushed right by me, okay? So finally at 3 o'clock, I'm like, hey, you know what? Because I pace myself on a 90-day pace with everybody else with the Bible reading. I'm finished. you got to finish up tomorrow, okay? So it's 3 o'clock. I hadn't uh, read that my allotted amount of the Word. So I sit down at 3 o'clock. I read the Word. I got up, ran, got something to eat, immediately took off, came to church, got here by 4.30 to, to start counseling. I stopped counseling at 10 minutes till 7, Okay? I walked out of the counseling room and I said, Father, I have absolutely no idea what I'm going to talk about. <laughs> and you know, Father, that I'm not wasting my time and I'm not being lazy. And I ask you, Lord, to give me a download right now in Jesus' name. <laughs> Boom, came. So all the notes. <laughs> There's the notes. Here we go. We're good to go. Now speak these things. See, we can speak. We can have all kinds of notes. But the Holy Ghost doesn't breathe on it, and nothing's going to happen, huh? The Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost is breathing on it. And if you, and, and I'm going to tell you what's the bigger problem: getting the Holy Ghost to breathe on it, get you to cooperate with it. Now let go here. Let me hear a good, strong, Amen. That's right too, okay? Because again, that, that's more important than the Holy Ghost breathing on it. So, reality of it is, no, I'm going to tell you. Reality of it is, a, 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 a drunkard could open up his Bible and quote John 3:16, the Word of God, save somebody, uh huh? Are you with me? Because there was somebody to cooperate with it. That's why I said that your will and your willingness to participate with it is bigger than 
the Holy Ghost breathing on it. Because God's word settled forever. It's got power. It's dynamite loaded with power from heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. And so, the Holy Ghost takes us, baptizes us, down into the midst of the body of Christ because we want it. We're expecting it. I'm asking. I've got a relationship. I'm in a relationship. I'm not in a religious process. Oh, I got saved, you know, 40 years ago. And I just, you know, I heard a prayer last night. I like watching this movie, and it's called You Can't Take It With You. It was a movie done back in the 1940s. If it was done in the 1940s, that's what I watch, basically. That's when the actors acted, and it wasn't based on special effects. It was actually based upon talent. And the scripts were decent, and they were about life. Okay? And somebody's going, boy, yeah, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> but at any rate, I'm not going to get into that part, because if I get on that, it's not going to work out for everybody. But, you know, this guy, he gives this, it's, it's about human nature. It's, I love movies about human nature. And it's just so classic because he's going to pray. He says, okay, God, we're coming to you again. And we're just letting you know that we're, everything that you've been doing is acceptable to us. And we just want you to know that all we want is just these few things. And we're not asking anything else from you. You can just leave us alone from that time period. And, uh, you know, and, and we'll just let everything else be whatever you like. Amen. And it's basically, a, God, here's what we're going to do for you. This is all we're going to do for you. And we don't expect you to expect any more out of us. And anything else you want, go ahead, do whatever you want to do. But we're not interested kind of thing. You're not going to get very far with God that way. You're not going to grow and you're not going to develop. It's a classic kind of state of human condition where people live. God we're happy with the food that you gave us because it really goes kind of down like this. We're happy with the food that we're given, you've given us. We're happy with our living conditions. We don't really want any more than this. We're, we're, we just want you to know we're satisfied with how you've been performing. And the rest we leave to you. I love listening to that prayer because that is exactly the problem. It's got to get turned around. Father, I want it. It's got to get turned around. Father, I'm desperate to have the stuff that you promised for me to have. I'm desperate to be functioning and operating in the full-blown dimensions of the giftings of your spirit. And I'm going to show you because I want it and I want it right now. I'm going to lay hold on it. I'm going to give myself to every spiritual activity that is involved in that. I'm going to give myself to the fun fundamentals of the church. People don't give themselves to the body of Christ or the church. They say they want spiritual gifts. You're lying to yourself, man. You're lying to yourself. You listen to me. Jesus put the church first. Somebody said, well, I'm just like the Holy Ghost. I like to go to different churches. I like to float around, find out where every, how everybody's doing. You're a troublemaker. You're a problem child. All you're going to be under is the chastening of the Lord till you willing to stop being stubborn and rebellious and hear God. Get yourself planted. Come under authority so people can look in your life and tell you where you're right and where you're wrong so somebody can be a perfecter and someone in your life, so someone can be over you in your life so that you can learn how to submit because it's the hardest thing for a human condition, for, the human, for a human being to do is submit because men have been trained to be like the devil. God came and liberated us to make us make him like to make us like him. And if we would just grow in the foundation and the in the environment of the church, we would have no troubles. But what happens is we go apart from that and we get now go back to the former conversation and we get reshaped in a different kind of an image. Then the image of Jesus, which is lowliness and meekness. If I want to walk in the gifting of the Spirit, it's going to be in lowliness and meekness. If I want to walk in the giftings of the Spirit, it's going to be in love and boldness. It's going to be in confidence and expectation. There is going to be a, there is going to be a, a, a diligence to seeking God because he's, he's a rewarder. He's going, to, he's going to have these things established in our life. All we've got to do is believe him, give ourselves to them. And so, you know, we say, wait a minute, I'm supposed to be a body, I'm supposed to be a functioning as a member in the body of Christ. <laughs> and I don't really even get excited about the worship and the praise. Well, that's your first spot. What's going on? We got to get we got to get past that. What's going on? You've exalted things in your life above Jesus. 
In other words, if the problems, the issues, the situations are bigger to you than who he is. Because if you can see him, the more you see him, the more excited you are about him. And there's a big difference between just singing along a song and being a good, faithful participator and having the Holy Ghost grab you with an inspiration and everybody can hear you talking directly to Jesus because it's got a distinctive sound. Huh? You're singing to him. It's got a distinctive sound. The one thing we want to do is we want to grow right. One thing we want to do is we want to develop right. I don't want any shortcuts. Anybody tries to come up in other ways, nothing but a thief and a robber. Huh? But anybody that sits around and waits for year after year after year, there's something wrong with their spirit too. Usually it's unforgiveness or it's an offense or it's a hurt or it's believing false doctrine. It's believing wrong things. Let's just be real simple with God and it will happen automatically. If I will participate with the dispositions of the Holy Ghost, when you feel that joy, when you feel that glory, when you feel that realms of, of the excitement of the Holy Spirit, you're hearing him. That's the way he talks. He's got a, he's got a, talk about a love language. He's got this glorious love language. He wanted to just hear audible voices. I heard an audible voice. I've heard an audible voice twice, uh, twice in my walk with the Lord. And I know people who walked in great power and anointing had done great things in the kingdom of God. They never heard an audible voice. I don't need to hear an audible voice. We have the audible voice. He, God speaks to us in, this, in these other in the, in the realms of love and joy and peace and goodness. He speaks to us in the realms of faith. Boom, we're hit with it. Like when that guy called me and said, I've got this cancer on me. Boom, I was hit with faith. I command it, I go, I command that thing to dry up right now in the name of Jesus. It was not hardly any louder than that, but there was the sound and the faith of the Holy Ghost behind it. Hallelujah. That's what we want. There's no warm-up prayer. There's no having to warm up in the bullpen. You sidearm for a while. None of that. It's just there. <laughs> Hallelujah. There's times where, there are times where, you know, somebody has called me out to pray, say, pray for me, and I don't feel the inspiration of prayer as soon as they say it. I wait for the inspiration. I'm an inspiration guy. Huh? And then I'll just start talking to tell me what's going on, what's happening. Just get it out there. Let's talk about it because there's probably some stuff we need to talk about, some things we need to repent for, things we need to get right. And then I just wait for the inspiration. And then sometimes it's like I don't really feel a strong unction of the Holy Ghost, which I love to do. I love function and a strong unction, a strong inspiration. But I just feel this release and I say, and I, I'll get right into it and I'll say, Lord Jesus. And then as soon as I say, Lord Jesus, Pow, the anointing comes. Uh -huh. Or I say, Father, come to you right now in Jesus' name. Man, I feel the anointing. I want to feel the anointing. I want to feel that. I want to feel like I just hooked up with the supply from heaven. I want, you know, you know the voltage regulator is there. We, we hooked up. Amen. I want to speak by the Holy Spirit. So, I, you know. There's commitments in our life that we give ourselves to. We continually give ourselves to them, and we develop in them. And we, we say, Lord, I don't want to speak my own word. And then when we catch ourselves speaking our own word, we just repent. Like what? Speaking our own word on, on, on what level? I hate you! <laughs> That's speaking your own word, okay? I mean, I hope no one in here has done anything like that, okay? Recently. Or I thought that. Or whatever you other outbursts you might have. I hate the situation. I'm tired of being fire. That's not the word of God. Are you with me? It's just too much. I can't take it anymore. Take what? What's what? What? And usually when people do that, they're not really caring much anyways. Anyway. You know, it's really true. They're not doing much. I haven't brought many people in the kingdom, if any. That's the way it is. The least people do, the more they act like they've done. What is up with that? The more people do, the least they act like they've done. Huh? I mean, you could, we can all feel real bad when Reinhard Bonke is saying, I don't feel like I've done anything. And it's like, <laughs> Father, if you haven't done anything, what do you think, where do you think that puts me? 
But it's just the way it is. It's just the way it is. We, the, we imaginations and wrong influences. We need to get, we get wisdom beyond our years, beyond our maturity level, simply by, simply by obeying God. Simply by taking heed to our word and saying, Lord, I want to, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to have that. And somebody said, well, what do you do with some, you know, um, you know, just bad feeling? You're upset. Fall down on your knees and repent. Do that. Say, Father, I am sorry. So you say, don't, don't bottle it up. So you should bottle it up. Well, I'm not talking about bottling up. I'm, 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 I'm talking about not letting them on the inside in the first place. And if you need to let something out, just holler to the Lord. Call out to the Lord. And say, Father, strengthen me right now. I've got a wrong attitude. Holy Spirit, strengthen me right now. Because this is a relationship that results in him talking to you and talking through you. Because you're giving yourself, you're giving your mouth, you're giving your words to what? Speaking, Lord, I want to speak for my own defense. I don't want to speak for my own gain, for my own purposes. I want to speak on your behalf. And the Lord's working with that. He tries that. He tests that out in us. He sees how serious we are <laughs> about the whole thing. He develops us in that. That's where the gifting of the, revel the, 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 the revelatory giftings, you know, are, are developed there. But more than that, the vocal giftings are developed there. I mean, I, I would say that revelation gifts, like the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom and the discerning of spirits, that those are more developed, and you're just simply giving yourself continually to the word of the Lord, to ministering to the, to ministering to the word. Samuel was given the responsibility to keep the lights on in the house, which represents the word, the revelation of God, the seeing, his manifest presence. Huh? You, just, you give yourself continually to the word. Father, I want to know your heart. Father, I want to understand how the things in the spirit work. I want to understand how to move with the spirit. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost, show me. <laughs> I know that you like the wind. Ain't nobody ever really going to figure out where you're coming from and where you're going and why you're doing it. But I want to learn how to put the sail up and catch the moving of your presence each time. So let me come back to this because I, I'm hoping the Lord will let me go deeper. Every time I start here, I start just basically in general. And then I say, I ask the Lord, you know, Father, tonight... Can I go ahead and begin to move in prophecy and then let people begin to experience the atmosphere of prophecy? And because I know that there is a realm of prophecy that if you come under that realm, if you look in the Old Testament, they got around, they got around prophecy being spoken. What happened? They, were even, they didn't even know the Lord, and they all began to prophesy, right? Saul, you'll go up to the, you'll go meet a company of the prophets coming down from Carmel, and as soon as you hear them, as soon as you get around, we're going to begin to prophesy. Um, and so we want to do that, but, it's, you know, always the Lord just has me start at a foundation. We've got to get the foundation sorted out. I, I don't want people jumping ahead. I don't want you getting ahead of yourself. I want you to just do it according to the way the, the, the Lord demands it. Um, how many of you notice sometimes when I get finished preaching and, or anyone else gets finished preaching and then they... Uh, Get ready to start praying for somebody. You feel the atmosphere change. Okay, you know what's going on there? You're beginning, you will begin to feel a manifestation of a different type of uh, working of the Holy Ghost. Could be gift of miracle. Could be gift of healing. You can feel that. You can feel the shift. I love the anointing with the word. Um, sometimes people are easier hooked up with a miracle anointing or healing anointing. Uh, because they're more desirous of that. The more desirous you, but you want to become so desirous of the word. That where the, that anointing is coming and being conveyed with the word of God. The word of God is powerful. The word of God is faith in parting. And so, I, I just stop to say that just simply because I want you to begin, to, I want you to recognize the movings of God. If you don't recognize the movings of God, how are you going to move with them? You need to recognize the movings of God. If you don't recognize, if you say, I don't recognize nothing, I don't feel anything, well, that's okay, but we want to develop you to where you can recognize things and we, you can develop, you can, um, so that you ultimately can develop in that. So, 
first of all, what is our responsibility? To be baptized in the body of Christ by the Holy Spirit so that we can function in the body of Christ as a member in particular with a specific function that the Holy Spirit is going to give us that we don't necessarily know what it's going to be. We're, here we are, we're thinking soberly about ourselves. I'm going I'm to think soberly about myself. I'm going to know where I'm in, at in God. But that ain't going to keep me from being that much more desirous and passionate and zealous for spiritual gifts, is it? Shouldn't. And it's not going to keep me from being bold and confident and laying hold on this. Lord, I want this. Well, it, you know, how, what, what, is, what is the dynamic of that? What does that actually look like? Lord, I want this. It first and foremost finds itself in participation, participating in the meeting in relationship of worshiping the Lord Jesus. Secondly, finds itself in participating on a day-to-day -day basis in relationship with the Lord where it's just continuing. Lord, I want you to use me in a great way. Father, I want to understand how to be developed in these things. I don't, I would not imagine that anybody who ever developed strong, in strong giftings in the Holy Ghost, in the word of knowledge, Word of knowledge, everybody I know that, get, that developed strong gifting in the word of knowledge gave themselves to the word of God. And usually the word of knowledge always was given in the context of a scripture being quoted. And out of that, then the, 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 the word of knowledge was further, was further detailed out. Lord, touch the baby, in Jesus' name. Touch mama, in Jesus' name. And so... But if I, thought, if I were to talk about especially, especially prophecy, vocal gifts, and miracle gifts, I would say that more common than anything else is giving yourself to radical prayer. It opens you up to another realm. I'm not talking about silent prayer. I'm not talking about laying down on the ground and just kind of laying there. Or kneeling down or just, just kneeling there. Hips are moving. I'm talking about vocal prayer. Of course, the gift of tongues really begins to excel us on another realm of, of vocal prayer. And you want that to excel quickly to where Father wants you to go. To where that... You start off and that gift that is coming out. Now listen, I never just pray in the Holy Ghost outside of a divine unction. It's so not there. I'll just pray and say, Lord, strengthen me. Fill me, Holy Ghost. Speak through me by your spot. I'll talk with my knowledge until that comes as an irresistible force. A nice thing is, the more you give yourself to praying in the Holy Ghost, the more it's a continual irresistible force because it truly is the first gift that we're given. It's the first gift that we're giving. It's the fundamental gift. You could translate at least, but that's weak. It's the first gift. It's the basic gift. It's the, it's the foundational gift that we're given without measure. <laughs> you don't get five minutes of praying in the Holy Ghost a day, use it wisely. Okay? Unlimited amount. Unlimited amount. Okay? Now, when I said that, I mean that I'll also get a bed at FT. I never stop. I never stop there. I wait till it excels into a prayer with the understanding that comes as a strong impulse. Huh? I don't pray, oh God, please help mom, help dad, help brother, help sister, help pastor, help president, help bring, 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 bring peace to Israel. Um, And get, that, you know, that just can be just nothing, but once again, more than re just religious. More than likely, that's just religious. It's just rote memorization. <laughs> Recently, I had to say that. Recently, somebody said, why does everybody want to bring peace to Israel? I said, oh, you're praying for Jesus to come because he's the only peace. Ah, yeah. Oh, God, bring peace to Israel. I have no idea why, but... <laughs> Not much faith in that. You know, we want to be hooked up with, you know. The Lord will give us knowledge. He'll give us understanding. He'll show us why. Hallelujah. But you don't. You stay with that until that strong prayer comes. 
You know what's going to happen out of that? You're going to, you will. Interpretation of tongues is easy. But it is simply a description of how much you're used to being around the Holy Ghost. It's a description of how, how comfortable you are with the flow of the Holy Ghost. It's as easy as gift as tongues itself. Hallelujah. It is inversely proportional to how mental you are. Are you with me? How much you got to think about it all and process it and figure it all out. Okay, if I say this, what happened this after that? What happened? No. And I'm be all mental about everything, trying to figure it all out. Oh, now, what does that mean? I can, I can recall that I said a tabba tabba one time before. And, <laughs> and it seemed like that. <laughs> Biggest thing is just relaxing. Just getting relaxed, getting comfortable. You take the pressure off, you do a lot better in every situation. You ever notice that? Huh? Huh? I've been around a lot of good golfers. Eat golf in the 60s. Um, my daughter, her, her brother, Matt, her youngest brother, Matt, was just with um, Bubba, and, he, you know, he was on the pro tour for a while. But the problem is, it's one thing to be just out there golfing for fun. It's another thing when the whole fairway is lined with eyes looking at you, that everybody... You know, where you're teeing off, line, you know, this line looking at you. You're under that pressure. You, you can't relax. You fall apart. Well, it, 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 in, in, it's that way in every area of life. It's that way in the realms of the Spirit. You can't make something happen. You can't force it. You've got to find a place where you are receiving from the Holy Ghost. This amazing comfort. These are foundational things. These aren't just like... You know, we'll get that later. Where you're receiving boldness and confidence. Where The Lord is so wonderful. He, he, he liberates us from the pres, prison of self-consciousness. Now what does everybody think? Now how am I doing? Now, did I do good? To where we're just, it doesn't matter anymore. We're just, I'm just happy. I, I've seen more open visions. I, I, I've seen more open visions and had probably in volume within the local church more miracles when I was finished. Church is over. We're done now. Pressure's off. And I really don't have much pressure. I really don't operate too, under too much pressure. I'm really actually having a whole lot of fun. And I don't feel pressure at all. But it's still, still, there's just another thing. You know, we're just, we're done. We're finished. There's a great thing to being done in God. On every level. It's a great thing to being finished. On every level. It's a great thing to being at rest. We're done. I don't have to do nothing. But it's like there's paradox going on. It's already, it, but it's something that's, it's something that you do outside of the, outside, at home. Nathan and Bobby's kids are amazing. They open up their Bible. They're plugged in. Always, they're plugged in. They've always got the Bible open. They've got, I've got 100% of their attention. Let me tell you why. That is going on at home. It's the homework. It don't happen in the meeting. You hear t teachers tell this in secular programs. Look, p parents send their kids to me, and I'm supposed to teach them everything, and they just are completely off, you know, completely disconnected. And they're not going to get the same results. It's the parents that are connected with their children. I have a friend who, he's from India, and boy, he's incredible in math. And he's incredible in chemistry. And you know what he did with his kids? They were great in math and chemistry before they got out of elementary school. Because that's all he did. Okay, now we're going to show you something else. Now, every day, he had every little model, you know. These kids were brilliant before they got out of elementary school. What happens when we do that in the things of the Spirit? Huh? That's what I did with my kids. Let me show Come here. Come here. Let's talk about faith. Let's talk about miracles. Let's talk about laying hands on the sick. Huh? Let's talk about how... Let's talk about the... The emotions of the Holy Ghost, the movings of the Spirit of God. Let's grab a hold of this thing. Come here. And I started them off on just little areas that they could understand. Let's worship God. Here's a little rhythm instrument. You pound on this, okay? We did clapping exercises just to come together, just to start worshiping. 
Just get in, getting into it on every level we can. What if we do that with our kids? My goodness, things go to another, they, they go to a whole other level within the framework of our children, framework with, of our family. What happens when we do that ourselves with the Holy Ghost? <clears throat> he wants to teach us. He's got things he wants to show us to do. Hey, we got to participate. Well, I'm offline. You're not going to grow and develop there. I know preachers who preach two, three times a day, seven days a week, because they're, they're, they're just running wide open. The anointing is pretty strong there, because <laughs> they're just always preaching, always ministering. Guess what? The anointing can be strong like that in your life, too, if you give yourself to ministering to the Lord. You know, come on now. If I walk up to you and I say, how are you doing? You tell me you're doing great and you ain't flowing in the Holy Ghost. You're lying to yourself. You just, I just want to say, you got to be kidding me. Your definition of great is way different from mine. Think about it, dear people. What is it that you want? Is you, you, is you want an earthly existence and you define the meaning and value of your life on an earthly existence? Or you want a heavenly one? You know? I think the greatest thing to say is when you say, how are you doing? I'm hungry and thirsty. How are you doing? I'm laying hold on God. Come on. Hallelujah. Now, listen, how do you, how do you begin to put things into your in perspective in your life so that you have, you have triggers, you have measuring devices, you have reminders, as it were. This is who I am. This is what I'm doing with my life. How do you give yourself to sowing to the Spirit? If you sow to the Spirit, what are you going to reap? What are you going to reap? What does that mean? If you sow to the Spirit, I know King James said, if you sow to the Spirit, you sow to the Spirit, reap life eternal. What does that mean? Is it life after death? It's the life of God. I'm going to sow to the Spirit. I want things to the Spirit. You're going to reap what you sow. You want to reap things to the Spirit? The Holy Spirit needs to spend some time with you so he can develop you in signs, wonders, and miracles, same ones that Jesus did. There is a right atmosphere that is based upon the right attitude. Watch out. Watch out. You can command the atmosphere. Did you know that you can command the atmosphere? Let me tell you how to command the atmosphere. You go into a room and everybody's arguing. Huh? Now, that could either come over, top, over you and you become argument too or fearful or whatever else, or you can immediately step in and bring peace. To a storm. You know how you can do that? Everybody's arguing. Hey, look at this. All these wonderful people. All the people that I love are right here in the same room. This is amazing. <laughs> and you go, in the name of Jesus, I take charge over the atmosphere right now. <laughs> no, it's really much simpler than that. It's cooperating with the ways of God. It's expressing the things of the Spirit, which is His love. Mm. His boldness, his confidence, his, assert, his certainty, his assurance. You know, the, the second, I would say the second most important dimension to the gifts of the Spirit, besides it being, and I, I could spend more time talking about this, but we'll, we will later. You spend more time praying about it, considering it, that it is uh, the, the very what should be happening as in terms of the expression and the function of the church, the manifestation of the members of the body of Christ. Because when the Lord describes the members of the bodies of, body of Christ, he's talking about actual functioning under the realms of the anointing. Hallelujah. You got strife, hurt, unforgiveness, bitterness, people don't like me, whatever other self, selfish, demonic thing you got going on, you ain't going to get connected. You're going to have to buy by the Holy Ghost be put down in Jesus. Jesus don't have any of that going on. Huh? Okay. Get that. Because as soon as you will, you're immediately in the environment to where that you will get a divine unction and begin to prophesy. Just out of the blue. Just right out of heaven. You've never done it before. I might did that feel good. And once you've done it, once you've got it, you've got it forever. I received anointings from the Lord when I went to nations. I received anointings from the Lord in every situation God ever got me into. I received an anointing. 
I received a download. And it's like Pac-Man. Once you got it, you get to keep it. <coughs> Excuse me. It's yours forever. Once you've got it, you get to keep it. It's yours forever. Yeah. I got in a situation where, where a miracle needed to happen. I got downloaded with the gift of miracles. And I have miracles, gifts of miracles working in my life to this very day. And there's a greater diversity of it and a greater depth of it that I'm desirous to have. And I'm going to have them because I'm, I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to let up. I'm not going to get discouraged. I'm not going to get disappointed. How can you get disappointed and discouraged when you're constantly being built up in the faith? When you're constantly being emboldened? When you're constantly getting supercharges of confidence right out of heaven? How when you're constantly getting downloads of God's very own life, which is life eternal, unending life, undiminishing life, God's life? Eh? So, the second most important dimension of the good thing in the Spirit, besides the revelation of the church, is for the advancement of the kingdom of God. Um, and before I get into that, it's probably already gotten late on me. It gets late on me. It gets like two hours go by, and I think it's 30 minutes. I don't want to go too late tonight. What time is it? 8.15. That's not too bad. Um, I feel... <laughs> I feel liberty. <laughs> so before I get into that, that dimension of advancement of the kingdom of God, obviously the gifts of the Spirit, the power gifts, is to go everywhere and be a witness of Jesus. I mean, the best place to see the gifts of the Spirit released in your life is you show up at work and somebody's got a headache. Show up at work and somebody's sick and ready to go home. The, the, the receptionist is right there. You can see her. She's like green. Or she's just feeling terrible. You walk over by, are you all right? No, I'm, I'm feeling like I'm going to throw up. Well, in the name of Jesus, I command you to be healed right now. And she's like, what did you just do to me? That was Jesus. Because the Lord is very interested in touching people like that. Let me say this. I watched this over and again. Had a woman visiting. She sat right there. She came up. She, needed, she wanted to be healed. She came up. She, I got about this far from her, and she started going. And then she said, I, I, I'm sorry, after the meeting. I'm sorry, I've never behaved like that before in my life. She said, you started walking towards me, and something came over me, a force I've never felt in my life. I said, well, that's just the Holy Ghost. And so I started getting closer again. She's like. <laughs> now, let me just tell you this. What happens is she has no ability to resist that. She could stay in here and develop ability to resist that. Right now she has no ability. She has no ability to stop it. It's here. It pervades everywhere. And, you know, it's not like the Lord says, you know what, I want to radically touch you, not you, uh, you, no, 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 you. <laughs> Kiss of the Spirit, manifestation of the Spirit, rather, is given to everybody. <laughs> everybody you know what and what goes on in our attitudes what do we what do we put up she didn't have any she had no basis to put up any kind of interference she had no basis to feel bad about me wonder if i like her don't like her care about her talk about her, about her whatever you know it's just this is a clean slate those things run interference we can't allow them we got to make sure that that stuff's all washed away by the the spirit of the living god by the water of the word by the flowing forth of the anointing Got to watch out. Satan will constantly try to divide you from the supply. He'll try, try, constantly try to bust pipes in your life, as it were, so that nothing flows to you. And you're sitting there all isolated going, what's wrong with me? But praise God when you can just begin to say, Lord, shine a floodlight of heaven upon my soul. And if you'll listen, he's probably going to bring the person that you've got a problem with to tell you what's wrong with you. Yeah, that's the way it works. <laughs> that's how it goes. Ouch. It's true. It's true. But when you look in First Corinthians chapter 14, we look at the beauty of the function of the church. And we see, what shall we do then? What, how, how are we going to behave ourselves? And, and we see, what do we, what do we see in the function of the church? We see the richness of the atmosphere of prophecy, don't we? And, and there's the encouragement of, of prophesy. Go ahead and excel to prophecy so that Everybody can be built up. And, and then it goes to a crescendo saying, you may all prophesy one by one. 
beautiful, hey. And here the Lord's talking to us in the, in the context of this, he's talking to us about singing in the spirit and singing in the understanding also. What a freedom. What a freedom. You're going to get touched by that in the meeting. There's going to be an impartation to you from the Holy Spirit. And then it's going to be developed at home. If it's just done in the meeting, it's stinking religious, man. And if it's not stinking religious, it will be before too long. It's just religious now. And later it'll be stinking. And it kind of grows. It's like people start off 100% relationship, and then they begin to displace relationship with just religious activity. Well, this is what I do. Does it result in you and Jesus touching each other, man? That's relationship. Does it that result in you and the Holy Ghost interacting with each other? That's relationship. And you've got as much as you want. Oh, let me say this. You got as much as you're desperate for. What you can live without, can't take it with you, prayer. As much as you can live without, you know, you're not going to have it. This stuff, is, this stuff is the riches of heaven. Look at what that rich environment creates. Don't you want that rich environment? Don't you, don't you, don't you, don't you want to be in that rich environment? People try to do it. They try to do it kind of by organization, and it's a flop. It's a grandiose flop. It's like one or two people constantly got a little poem, you know. One or two people got a verse of scripture that they're just burning with, and it's completely out of the, it's not even off, it's completely off topic, huh? And somebody's like, hey, you guys, I know. It ain't going to happen that way. It's got to be this beautiful, rich, loving, we're happy just standing here in your presence environment. And then it just happens. It just happens. You're just, just in this display of God's love. If I can teach people how to worship and if I can teach people how to talk to God, I can show people how to function in the anointing of the Holy Ghost and speak on his behalf. And it's beautiful. And it's just, it, it just, you, if you want it any other way, it's not going to come any other way. You look at the school of the prophets in the Old Testament. It was centered around worship and praise. You look at, at the commands of God and the, at what, what's, what's at, at the very hub of the moving and the working and the gifts of the Spirit in the New Testament. And it's this radical, bold, fiery prayer. I mean, Elijah is the kind of example you want to have. And look at how he prayed. He had the red-hot prayer, the fervent prayer of the righteous man. He says, the confidence, I know who I am in God. Amen. You need to know who you are in God. Hallelujah. If you don't know who you are in God, today's the day of your salvation. Today it can be rewritten for you. Today you can quit being who you are on the earth and what you think people believe about you and what you believe about yourself based upon the condition of humanity. Get over that, because that ain't going to get you into the kingdom. Not now, not later. God's got a way for you and I to step over in the realms of the kingdom. What is the kingdom? Righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost. That's kingdom. That's kingdom manifestation. Jesus said, if I cast out devils by the Spirit then the and work miracles, then the kingdom has come upon you, or come to, or been revealed to you, or come to you. Looky here. I, that's what God wants us to have. The church is the vehicle of the kingdom. We are supposed to be expressing the kingdom. This is what it's all about. The king being made manifest. The Holy Spirit's the only one who can do that. He's made a way that you and I can be completely submitted to him and freely receive everything that he has, all things that he has, uh, all things, everything that belongs to him, I'm going to give it to you. That which eye has seen, that which ear has heard, that which has entered into the heart of man, it don't even fit in this realm because none of that realm has showed to us the things of the Holy Spirit. Eye has not seen. Ear has not heard, neither has it entered the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him, but the Holy Ghost has come to make a manifest, to reveal these things to us. All we have to do is be simple in the, our understanding with how to hook up with some, how to let this glory realm flow to us. And then what happens in that rich environment? You all prophesy one by one, and what does the Scripture say? The secrets, here comes in the, the unbelieving and the unlearned, and what happens? 
they overwhelmed by the glory in the place to start off with. But Paul just had already basically laid the foundation for that. He didn't need to really even say it. He said, but there, it, the secrets of their heart being made manifest, they fall down in the place, and they surely, they say, God is here. But you know what I watch happen over and again? I watch this. I watch a visitor come in, and it's like a demonic assignment. They are actually led, as it were, almost by the devil. I hate to say this, but it, all, it just works like this too much. By the saddest, sorriest Christians in the place. And now they're set between the, like right between the saddest, sorriest Christians in the place. The ones with the biggest frowns, biggest dejection, huh? And then some in, somebody in front of them just groaning the whole time. Or something like that. I mean, maybe that's a little bit of an overplay on it. But nonetheless, <laughs> he, what does that do? On a fundamental level, it works just the opposite. Would that be terrible to have to think I actually participated with just the very opposite effect of what God described is supposed to be happening in the church? How am I ever going to develop in the gifts of the Spirit or be a student of the Holy Ghost when I'm doing the opposite of what he's doing? My presence has the opposite effect. My influence is an anti-Christ influence. Uh-oh. Now, what I did was I handed out compact mirrors for a while. I'm a pastor. Obviously, I spoke at 50, uh, 75 times. Somebody still hasn't got it. Well, let me help. Here's a compact mirror. And, you know, I, my wife put a big smiley face on one side. So you can look at smiley face and look at your face. How does that look? And then, you know, I had another suggestion one time. Get somebody to take a picture of you. When you're just like baptized in the Holy Ghost, when you're just out there and you just so filled up. And then put that in there in like the compact case, you know. So where the where the normally where the powder is, right? There's your picture of that moment full of the Holy Ghost. Now look at yourself. Contrast and compare. Because we want to empower you to deal with reality. Because all you have to do participate with the Holy Ghost and it happens all you have to do is just simply crack the door open for him just like just like like a scary or scared person that there's and just barely crack the door and he'll bust right in just a little crack he doesn't come in because the door slammed shut and locked how's it slammed shut and locked attitudes your disposition what you purpose to do many people come to church they have purpose to do something out of their own self. They've purposed it in their mind. It might even be subconscious. They purposed it in their mind. And they do not have the word of God to bring them into check. To say, wait a minute. I'm submitting my will to God and my purpose is the purpose he's described. I'm going to do it. I'm cooperating with him. It's a different atmosphere. This is how simple it is to function in the, in the gifts of the Spirit. When we give ourselves to that interaction with the Holy Spirit, to where fundamentally at the basis of 1 Corinthians chapter 14. It's a whole chapter developed to the essential need for tongues in the church. I know. That really flies in the face of a lot of theology. But all those theology that, that it flies in the face of, none of those guys have ever spoken one syllable in tongues. So how can they tell you anything about what it means when they know nothing of it? It is a realm that they reject. They've never experienced it. I know this realm. I have experienced it. Hallelujah. And so anyone like me can also tell you, 1 Corinthians chapter 14 is a, is a discussion about the necessity of tongues in the church. It builds right off of how the church began, baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. Let me tell you what I believe. And I can, I can prove it in the Scripture more than anyone could disprove it. I believe that every church stir, service started with a baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire with the expression of everybody speaking in a Holy Ghost language, just like it did on the day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2, verse 4. That's how church services began in the first century church. And out of that began to be the flow and the eruption of divine power and glory that was there from the very beginning. The precedence was set. And every major event that we look at, that same precedence is repeated. Yeah, every major event that God highlights that same precedence is repeated. So how can people argue from silence 
and say it wasn't continual. Can't argue from silence. It's against the rules. You may only argue based upon the revealed evidence. And that's the revealed evidence. And then, furthermore, Paul takes it to a level of showing the church saturated with tongues because not only to say is the manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit, but then by the time you get down to the end of chapter 12, what does he say? What else did he put into the ch church? Besides prof apostles, prophets, evangelists, besides apostles, prophets, teachers, working of miracles, gifts and healing governments, what did he put in it? Tongues. He said it in his office as a function in the church and the, and the gift of tongues. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Somebody said, does all speak with tongues? Everybody's been baptized in the Holy Ghost. Hello. The only people that don't are the ones who haven't been baptized in the Holy Ghost. Somebody said, well, do all have all the gifts of the Spirit? You should want them. And if you don't, there's something wrong with your heart. Something's going on that's wrong there. Because that's not the, that's not the, that's not the nature of the Father. That's not the Spirit of the Son. If you really want them and you're willing to obey God, it's got to take two things. You really want them, and you're willing to do what's right. You're willing to obey God. That, they're yours. My job is to help people understand where they're not obeying God, where they're doing wrong things to point it out. Say, don't do that. Just make these little adjustments. That rich atmosphere of tongues, that rich atmosphere of prophecy, that rich atmosphere of thanksgiving, that rich atmosphere of submission to one another to where that you may all prophesy one by one and let the others judge. Hmm, hallelujah. How is it, brethren, that when you come together, every one of you have a revelation? Had you, have you read that lately? Has everybody read that lately? What is that? That's a passion. Every one of you has a prophecy. Every one of you has a tongue. Every one of you has a doctrine. It's rich. It's there. Now you, you can sit there and go, I, 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 I really want that. So then I'm going to back it up and say, start off with praise and thanksgiving. This is all the Lord wants, just the praise and thanksgiving. Don't get, just get, 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 you want this? Start having praise and thanksgiving, not because you have to, not under law, but because it's in you. It's because you've, you've let the Holy Spirit reveal Jesus to you. And you're so excited about it. <clears throat> In Jesus' name. Kikaso tolonomahosa. I prasatamene. Suki nomosatamene. Hallelujah. Ura sofrene shi. Akta tsiniki asatalade. Hallelujah. Praise God. Si resuna. Si resuna. Be ramata si kiti. Be vrenasu ti kiti si patu si pa. So, in conclusion, because I'm not going to go in to the gifts of the Spirit for the advance for the kingdom of God. That's second. First, you receive it in the church. It's first in the church by precedence. It's developed there. It's, it's then it's used on every level. You don't have to wait. You don't have to wait a day. You just immediately go out of, the, out of the church and it's happening, okay? But it's, but it's, it's imparted at the church, okay? It's for the advancement of the kingdom. It's developed in your life in the church and in your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ outside of the church. You give yourself to these things and you watch what happens. I'm telling you, you won't recognize yourself in a year because I, you will discover it, it, it is not even, it, it's just going to come up on you, sneak up on you. You're going to be telling somebody what's going on in their life before you even realize you were te telling them. You're going to lay hands on the sick and they're going to recover. You're going to see the blind see, the deaf will hear. It will happen. The harder you try, the worse it's going to, the worse the results will be. I'm going to tell you this. The harder you try, the worse the results will be. Believe me. I love using the example of the baby that was born blind in this church. 
Mom comes up with baby. Doctors say, baby, could possibly have an operation and, say, and, and recovers at least the ability to see light. I walked by the baby and said, baby's fine, Jesus' name. I don't even know if I said Jesus' name. I said, baby's fine. Baby's completely fine. That's all I said. Baby's fine. Baby was completely and totally healed. Totally healed. The next day they went to the doctors. 20-20 vision once happened to this baby. The man of God said, baby's fine. I had no pressure. No pressure on me. Baby's fine. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> the harder you try, the worse the results. Are you with me? Amen. Those of you who play golf, it's all arms. The more the arms, are you with me? Yeah. I want you to get this. Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, Father, are we done? Holy Spirit, I ask you to take hold of each person in this place, strengthen them. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that every person give themselves to boldness and confidence. They just be willing to give themselves to these things and do them. And they give themselves to praying in the Holy Ghost. They give themselves to not prayer by obligation, but prayer by privilege. Hallelujah. Not necessarily a length of time, but, a, but, a, but an explosion of relationship. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, living God. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, living God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, just I just want to say this in closing, tenth closing. Um, when you do something wrong, say to, ask the Lord to forgive you. Don't just leave it on hold. Just say, Lord, forgive me. Lord, I never want to have that going on in my life ever again. Just ask him. Talk to him. Talk, don't, don't have a silent relationship with the Lord. Constantly be talking to him. Lord, fill me. Strengthen me. Somebody say, what if you don't have the peace? Praying the Holy Ghost till the peace comes. Would you be committed to that? Everything in your life will change. The Father is giving you this great privilege. He's giving you this great opportunity, this great honor to be endued with Christ. What if you don't take advantage of it? To put on the Lord Jesus Christ. What a privilege, what an honor. To be filled with the Spirit. He's given us this great privilege and honor. What if you don't do it? What if you don't say, Holy Spirit, come and fill me right now. Come overwhelm me right now. And what are you going to do to stand there? Well, what's up? I'm not feeling anything yet. I said, Holy Ghost, come and fill me. And nothing's going to happen like that. You ask, the, you ask the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, come and fill me. Come strength to me. Come let your love, come let your joy, come let your glory flow out of me. And you just begin to give yourself to praise in him and worship him. Just like I did right here at the beginning of the meeting. Just begin to hook up with him in that realm. Every time he's going to fill you. And every time he fills you, the stronger the feeling will come. Every time, he, every time you allow the manifest presence of the Lord to be made available to you, revealed through you, to you, the stronger that manifestation of the presence of the Lord will be. And it'll just keep getting better every year. Amen. Every day. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Does anybody have any questions? Any, any burning question? Any concern? Anybody? Concerned about everybody praying in the Holy Ghost all at once in the church? Okay. I, I don't, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't look for an explanation for that. I wouldn't look for an explanation. I would rather place a demand and say, 
place a demand on a continual flow. And don't let it be anything less than that continual flow. Don't, don't be willing to allow it to abate. Let, let any, any diminishing or decrease, as it were, in the manifestation of the Holy Ghost drive you to your knees, crying out with greater desperation and greater passion. Because all I would say is at best, no, at worst, it would be a means by which God would drive you to a greater, a greater expression. Of his glory through your life. Yeah, so I didn't get into the evangelism part of it. And, I, and once again, for me, uh, and what I see in the word of God and what I've experienced my own self, is that the operation of the gifts of the Spirit are even more radically displayed and come even that much easier in evangelism. Without even trying. I mean, one of the, time, one of the times the Lord highlighted this the best for me. I mean, I've had many highlights, but I mean, on the larger scale, we had a stadium packed out with people, and all I did was say hello. I, would just, I didn't even got started yet. I just said hello. They'd sing for like an hour and a half up on the platform, and nothing happened. Nothing was, it was, everything was normal in the place. I just go up and I just said hello. And when I did, literally, simultaneously, thousands of people were delivered from demon spirits. It was just all over the place. Crazy pandemonium. It was amazing. And it's like, wow, Lord, this is so effortless. You are amazing. All he wants is just our, even our hello is powerful. And so, yeah. Evangelism, easy. Miracles, signs, wonders. Hallelujah. Do it more, Lord. Great great displays of your power. Amen. Be an expectation of it. And without expectation, without confidence, without boldness, without certainty. That's what, and you know, notice this. If you can't, if you can grab hold of this. Satan's primary strategy is to try to mess with your boldness and your confidence. If he can mess with your boldness and your confidence, forget about it. Faith ain't going to operate. And that's where, the, that's where his attack of condemnation and accusation and slander comes. You're not worthy. You're not fit and all that other nonsense. You need to recognize it as demonic. I don't care where it comes from, man, devils, or circumstance. And you need to get ferocious with it. Extreme prejudice. Stop it. Take it out. You're not, you not fit to go out of your house without boldness and confidence and assurance in Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, just lift your hands towards heaven. Just, just lift your hands towards heaven. One, one, fura se, resenea, lura sananea, ha ha, lela sikiteya. Father, I thank you that not a single soul will walk out of this place sick or diseased in their body. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you that not a single person will walk out of here tormented or afflicted in their mind, that everyone will be strengthened and equipped by you to deal with everything that would try to stop them, that they would give themselves, Lord, to flowing in this wonderful realm, give themselves to building up themselves in their most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, give themselves, Lord, to the responsibility of hearing from you, cooperating with you, being led by you, guided by you, taught by you. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Taste and I. Taste and I. Ha ha. Hallelujah. Hat take no sebeke. Thank you, Jesus. Well, amen.